Hello Masoka Universe for the second installment of my personal Hall of Fame. I had actually this jersey on before, but then I said, well, I have an inter jersey with exactly the player name back on there. We are talking, of course, of Ronaldo, Nazario, da Lima, Ronaldo. I think the Portuguese say something like that. Um, and yeah, I. He fits right into this second category of my Hall of Fame. And before we get into it, I want to explain again, because I think I was not... I want to talk mostly about players that I saw during my lifetime that were uh, great players. I have a category that I call idols, where we had Van Basten the last time. And the second category is legends, which are players that I didn't necessarily adore in certain ways even dislike uh, at least for a point and uh, that's definitely true for Ronaldo uh, believe it or not I will get to that but in the end they are so Im such important players uh, in the time that I've been watching that they absolutely need to be mentioned and uh, he is definitely one of the greatest legends I have to say, uh, preparing for this video, I watched a few uh, YouTube uh, highlight videos. I also looked over on his Wikipedia page and I have to say it really, really hurt me. When I plunge into Ronaldo, then there's Ronaldo and then there's Ronaldo, Brazilian footballer. No. Maybe at the moment everyone knows Cristiano Ronaldo and I don't want to diminish his uh, goals. But if you say Ronaldo to me, it's Ronaldo Nazario da Lima. The other one is Cristiano Ronaldo. I call uh, this Ronaldo we're talking about here as the original Ronaldo. Uh, in a way, I don't find it right that this doesn't seem right to me. He is the original. And if his career wasn't as injury plagued as it was, which is also part and this is also something that connects him with Van Basten, I think we would be talking about uh, Ronaldo in the same way that we would be talking about uh, Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo at the moment. Uh, there is no doubt in my mind. He was a next level soccer player in a time where you didn't have all this craziness that we see now from the uh, big two where they dribble past 100 opponents and, and, and so on. In fact, one of the uh, char big characteristics of his was that he was kind of this first wave of strikers. And I can only think about uh, Georges Vea, who did similar stuff, who actually dropped back and got the ball in midfield and then attacked with the whole field ahead of them, using his speed and his insane skills. Um, let's get a little bit into his career. I think the first time I heard of him was actually at the 94 World Cup and I really, really, really wanted that he plays just for a little bit. And he never was brought on. Um, I, he had played for Cruzeiro uh, and I think he was uh, 17 year old when he played at the World Cup and I would have loved if the coach, I think uh, Pereira, would have given him just a few minutes, maybe in the group stage or whatever. I mean, Brazil was already qualified against Sweden. Give him a few minutes uh, or even bring him on as a relief striker because he was already a sensational talent. Yes, they had Bebeto, they had, of course, Romario, um, who kind of, uh, at the beginning, Romario's career kind of shaped a little bit Ronaldo's career at the very very beginning although Romario was a lot later he also stayed a lot uh, longer at PSV Eindhoven but he recommended uh, Ronaldo to go to PSV Eindhoven because he knew that uh, the Dutch league and uh, the build-up there will be of big help for him and this is where he made his first impact and I think it I even remember him playing against uh, Leverkusen in the UEFA Cup um, where everyone was saying, oh, Ronaldo, this is a great talent. I think it was 994, 995. And I think the first time I really saw, uh, saw Ronaldo was, especially in the celebration picture, after Brazil won that World Cup. He's the one player there with the Massaro uh, Italy shirt, the only one in the blue jersey, lying there, having the trophy, but he didn't play. So 
Um, by the strictest um, criteria, he's not a 94 World Cup winner. He was in the squad, he did not participate, and he for sure did not participate in, in the final, which probably would have been too much. But I remember clamoring, please play him, play him, I want to see him. Everyone is talking about him, I want to see him. Did not happen. But anyway, uh, in the Netherlands, surprisingly, and this was also kind of a thing with him, he scored a ton of goals. I think he scored, uh, yeah, here we have it, 46 appearances, 42 goals, a total of 57 appearances, 54 goals. Uh, he was, of course, top scorer in the Eredivisie um, uh, in his first year with uh, 30 goals. I mean, believe it or not, second year, uh, there was a decided drop off but he only won a Dutch Cup and why that because there was one team at the time that was a whole lot better and that was Ajax and this is kind of also Ronaldo unfortunately had always the um, good nose to find to play for a team that is not at the very 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 top uh, which is also this is the one thing he has an incredible he was an incredible talent has an incredible scoring record but overall his um trophies won is actually kind of thin next year he joins uh in for 96 97 he joins barcelona and he bursts onto the scene there I remember in 96, 97, we watched, um, there was a weekly uh, European highlight show on German television that we watched religiously and it was really, what did Ronaldo do this time? Uh, it, it was an incredible season where he scored uh, just in the league in 37 games, uh, he scored 34 goals. He was near unstoppable and especially at the beginning uh, and mid-season form was just staggering, absolutely nuts. But very cool and the goal you want to look up is the one against that he scored against Compostela. I mean this is one of those really unbelievable ones but you can take any goal. The problem at the time is that Barcelona was kind of, this was the post Greif era, era uh, where they needed to find themselves and he was supposedly the shining light and this was kind of the first season there they wanted to build on him. But very quickly, um, you know, contract negotiations and so on, it were kind of ran afoul. The Barca hierarchy, it was not gelling and you felt this towards the end of the season where he didn't score all that uh, well anymore. However, he got a Copa del Rey and he scored decisive goals in the Cup Winners Cup final in 97 in Rotterdam, uh, which was the only European Cup uh, that was not won by a German team that year, I mean, singly so. Um, and that is also, I have to say, uh, those Barcelona jerseys back then, this was the, were those teal jerseys that they wore in Rotterdam. It was a final where both teams wore away jerseys. It was kind of weird looking. But of course Barcelona wanted to keep him but this was kind of he was one of those last really big moves where a Serie A team and Serie A at that time was the biggest league in the world and this was kind of the last uh, one of the last moves where this the muscle of Serie A was we can pry away a Ronaldo from Barcelona and for the second time in uh, in within almost a year, he broke the world record transfer fee. If he was a world record transfer of PSV to Barcelona, from Barcelona to Inter, he broke that record again. Uh, I think that the best Ronaldo we have ever seen was in that season at Barcelona. He was nearly unstoppable. Not to say that he was that bad at Inter. Uh, however, the Serie A was a little bit it's a, it's a tougher league. I mean, uh, the Spanish league, and having seen, uh, you know, a few games in in the early 2000s in Spain, uh, Spanish soccer is not very tough, rough and tough on tackling. It's, um, I remember we watched Barcelona against Mal Malaga, and I think after 60 minutes, 
uh, my friend tells me, have you seen any foul here? No, there wasn't really, really a foul. So uh, it's a very friendly league for open, expensive football. Serie A, not so. And he still had an amazing uh, goal total. I think he won the Capo Cananiere in his first year there. Uh, let me see. Da, 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 da. Oh, did he? He did not. He won the Pichichi trophy for Barcelona, but he did not win the Capo Cananiere. That's, um, I thought, but he still, he scored 25 goals in 32 games, which is an amazing record, and he actually lifted Inter into title contention. When he got to Inter, I think everyone kind of uh, thought this would be the huge game changer in Serie, Serie A. Up until that point, it was all Milan and Juventus. Now Inter had the biggest player in the world. His debut was overshadowed by Alvaro Rakova. Uh, but honestly, this was, uh, I really thought, and this is where I then started to turn on him because how can you choose Inter? How can you choose Inter? And in my mind, Ronaldo is still mostly an Inter player because I think the, the, the impact that he made there, I mean, it's either Barca, it's the height, it was this one season at Barcelona and the, sec the first season uh, at Inter where he was absolutely amazing and you can uh, you know with his speed with his skills with his double step overs elasticos you name it he did it he really did it and he got into, into title contention watch the highlights of the late season clash between Juve and Inter a game that if you mention it especially to Inter fans you will get hour-long uh, discussions was it a penalty or not um, one of those crazy games uh, where uh, Ronaldo is probably, I say probably, I, I, I don't want to take a side of the argument, but it seemed like a, a penalty. He's fouled in the box, in the players go nuts. Um, and then the game goes on the other side and a penalty is awarded for Juventus. And that kind of summed up everything, the protection that Juventus receives. Yeah, um, great season. He caps it off with an absolute dominating performance in the UEFA Cup final. Uh, the first one-legged one against Lazio, where he was unplayable, scores a goal uh, in a famous uh, horizontally striped Inter jersey. And he's, of course, the big star heading into the 98 World Cup. How big of a star was he? Uh, not that this counts for much, but... Uh, at that time, I, me and my buddies, we were playing, uh, you know, a World Cup predictor game and one of the things, you pick a player for the entire tournament and if this player scores, you get a certain amount of points. I was seriously advocating that Ronaldo should not be selected because he will, whoever gets Ronaldo has an unfair advantage. Um, no one agreed with me and it turns out he did not win the golden boot and he did not score 10,000 goals but I, I remember saying Scotland, Morocco, Norway, he will score like crazy. Well, it turn, turn, turns out he only went a little bit crazy against Morocco. He had a great showing uh, against Chile and then uh, he was one of the better games of this World Cup. Surely, surely was the quarter, quarter final against um, Denmark, which was a fun game to watch, uh, but where he really, really killed me. And this was then the final nail in, in, in the coffin. I do not like this player anymore. My brother Florian, he still loved him from his personality. He had the Brazil jersey with Ronaldo and everything. When he played against the Dutch, I wanted the Dutch to go to the final. I was all in for the Dutch. And then the Dutch were largely the better team, had more, I mean, had more control and more possession, I don't want to say uh, the better team, but for a second they forget Ronaldo at the beginning of the first half and he scores that, that freaking goal. And although Kluivert equalizes penalties and Brazil goes to the final. In the final, one of the big mysteries of modern soccer, what happened? Seemingly he had a seizure, uh, completely distressed the Brazilian team, an hour before kickoff, Ronaldo was not in the final, uh, in, the, in the starting lineup for Brazil. Seemingly the Nike, not fit to play, seemingly the Nike kind of uh, intervened, made him play, but no one really knows exactly what happened. He was a shadow of himself. I remember there was one scene in the first half 
Well, was no, it was it was in the second half where he suddenly it was already two 0 for France where he had the chance to score something, and timid, not there, and yeah, this is how it kind of continued for him because in. 98, 9, 99 injuries came and uh, like with Van Basten, uh, knee injuries. Uh, with Van Basten it was the um, uh, cartilage in the knee, with um, him it was the patella tendon in his knee that always seemed to be a ticking time bomb. Inter had a great start to the season but it got uh, to the point where it um, kind of seemed on breaking. He always kept missing, he had some uh, little injuries. Um, so 19 games, 14 goals. I saw him then in for the first time I actually saw him live. Uh, I think it was the second uh, round of Serie A, uh, Roma Inter, where I'm still mad. Just in the spring before, this was a 5-4 win for Inter. Uh, so nine goal game and then we see a Really nil nil draw. There's Vieri, there's Ronaldo, there's Marcello Lippi on the bench, uh, there's Totti Del Vecchio. I mean, all the big names, and you see a pretty uh, not good game. And then the next game was, of course, a 3 2 or some, something like that. Great, 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 great. He didn't seem quite that fit, and you could, see, yeah, he them broke the tendon, it was reconstructed. He comes back for the cup final and within six minutes it ruptures and he's lying there on the grass uh, and you just could feel for him. I mean, even then I was not in his camp, but this was just devastating to see him. He was there crying, uh, he missed the entire next season. Uh, at that point then Inter, he scored some crucial goals in the 2001-02 season where Inter finally he came back and the Inter could finally push for the title. And again against Lazio. Hector Cooper, the Inter up 2-1, takes him out at halftime. Inter loses at 4-2 against the Lazio that had nothing to play for. Where even the fans were supporting Inter because they didn't want Roma or Juve to win. One of the other. He played in two pretty big games in um, Serie A history in that time. Probably the two biggest ones at that time. Inter doesn't win the title and Ronaldo ends his career at Inter in tears. He demands a change and eventually Real Madrid picks up. But in the meantime, he completely restores his reputation at the 2002 World Cup, where he becomes the uh, last player to score more than six goals in the tournament. I wouldn't say he single-handedly put the, uh, Brazil to the World Cup title, but pretty close so. I mean, he scored the decisive goal in semi-final, typical Ronaldo fashion. He pounced on the one error that Kahn made and then he scored a second one to make it 2-0 in the final against Germany, scoring more go uh, scoring many goals uh, before that. And being in really good form and everyone at Real Madrid was happy to have him. But you already could see that his knee was not that great anymore. Um, he didn't have the explosiveness that he had in 96, 97, 97, 98. That was gone. He was a formidable goal scorer and his goal scoring record uh, for Real Madrid, especially in the first three seasons, 23 in 31 games, 24 in 32 games, 21 in 34 games, really showed that he's a great, he was in great form. Um, but again, injuries kind of always unsettled everything and uh, especially I think in the uh, 04 or 05 campaign, uh, Real Madrid was really set kind of for a treble and then petered out all the same, same thing in 03 or 04. As soon as he got injured, he petered, petered out. What I remember most of his Real Madrid career is that he had this amazing performance at Old Trafford, but then he missed uh, the return league in the semi finals. The next season, as soon as he got injured, uh, Real Madrid's uh, Galactico team got derailed and he never even got close. The closest he actually came to winning the Champions League uh, was in 06 or 07 when he transferred to Milan. So he was not only playing for Barcelona and Real Madrid, he was also playing for Inter and Milan. Though he never made a direct transfer. He was in the squad, but he could not play. He was cup tied. Um, he scored important goals for Milan, especially in the 06 or 07 season. He had uh, seven goals in 14 games, winning a derby, all, all that kind of. Uh, but another sad image is that he is there in the celebrations when Milan wins the Champions League and 
he again was a bit part player. He could not play. I'm sure he would have played. If he were if he were allowed to play, he would have played in that final. Then he would have won his Champions League, which he would deserve. He's probably the best player that ever won the Champions League, my opinion. Uh, then again, knee and ends his career uh, Milan. He plays three more seasons for Corinthians, but the last season also injuries. At that time, there was also the 2006 World Cup. Another big thing was uh, many people were uh, saying he's not fit, he looks overweight and everything, which was kind of the big joke, especially the 2006 World Cup. Thick as fat as Ronaldo. Thicky, thick fat Ronaldo. The German said he still made the World Cup uh, record, record of scoring 15 goals, uh, breaking Gerd Müller's uh, record. Uh, well, no, 14 goals, uh, breaking Gerd Müller's 15 is closer. But knowing now, he had a thyroid issue, and if you know anything about thyroid disease, it is really, really hard to keep a normal weight. And so, yeah, formidable goal scorer. I think injuries prevented us from him, uh, from uh, from us calling him among in the conversation of the best player to ever have played. I think so highly of him. Uh, Despite having, not having liked him for most of his career, I really think that he is one of those players. If he could stay fit, and this is similar with Van Basten, I think Van Basten probably was always bound to be the second or third best Dutch player that ever played. Um, I personally think probably second best. For Ronaldo, I'm not sure how, where he would be in the Brazil pantheon, um, but probably up just a rung below Pelé. If he would have stayed fit, uh, he would have been amazing. I think he would have, uh, if he wouldn't have had the seizure, he would have won the World Cup final. If uh, he would stay fit, I think Inter probably would have won something with him too. And he probably could have lifted the Champions League with Real Madrid. That, uh, that's the quality that he had. But yeah, still an amazing career. I think he should always be in a discussion among the best player of the 90s. Um, one of the best players of all time. And if you watch my top 10 goal score, uh, World Cup goal scorers video, I have him at number two. Second best World Cup goal scorer of all time. And this is the place where he rightly belongs. So with that, Ronaldo, at the end of your career, you got it right. You went to Milan. Uh, at that point, I actually, I loved the him with 99. That was just such a great choice. And I was, was so excited. Kaka, Pato and Ronaldo on the front. Fortunately, injury prevented that from being a great uh, trio. But still, I induct you to my personal Hall of Fame. Let me know what you thought about Ronaldo in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.